subcommittee will come to order. It was the biggest bombshell of the biggest political scandal in American history. Mr. Butterfield, are you aware of the installation of any listening devices in the Oval Office of the President? I was aware of listening devices. Yes, sir. White House aide Alexander Butterfield revealing the existence of the White House taping system to the Senate Watergate Committee. When Butterfield gave that dramatic testimony in July 1973, it, it was a pivot point in Watergate. Reporter Bob Woodward, who along with Carl Bernstein famously exposed the machinations of the Nixon White House, had tried and failed to interview Butterfield. So he passed the name on to the Watergate Committee. Do you think the tapes would have ever been revealed had it not been for Butterfield? I think they probably would not have. Turns out Butterfield was sitting on a lot more secrets, 20 boxes full of them. This is the year 1971, and each of these is a month. Which two years ago he turned over to Woodward. Did you ever, in your wildest dreams, think that you would one day be collaborating with Bob Woodward of all people? No, not at all. So what did you think when you walk into his apartment and you see those 20 boxes? I thought, wow, <laughs> let's start looking. The result is The Last of the President's Men, published by Simon & Schuster, a division of CBS. In addition to the documents, Woodward spent 40 hours interviewing Butterfield, who for three years occupied the office next to the president's. First one to see him every day, last person to see him every night, attending to all of the immediate needs. When Butterfield left, he took his files with him. Some of those uh, documents are classified top secret. How did you just walk away with them from the White House? It was easy. I just walked away with them. Oh, I did the wrong thing. No one's supposed to do that. But I felt, to tell you the truth, that those papers were safer with me than with anyone. I'd been around classified dot. That's no excuse, but I'm saying I wasn't going to show these to the wrong person, and I was going to take good care of them. One top secret document reveals Nixon's candid handwritten opinion of the bombing of Vietnam, an angry scrawl across a report from his national security advisor, Henry Kissinger. We have had 10 years of total control of the air in Laos and Vietnam. The result? Zilch. And, and just the day before, Nixon told Dan Rather of CBS News exactly the opposite. The results have been very, very effective. But surely uh, Nixon was not the first and won't be the last president to privately say things he would never say in public. Yeah, but the level of contradiction and the depth of the fraud. According to Woodward's research, Nixon had already ordered the military to drop nearly three million tons of bombs and would order another million dropped in the year after the Zilch memo. It sends you to, into your heart and soul about, you know, what are we doing? How did this happen? Uh, how could we have been led this way? It takes the concept of military leadership by a president turns it on its head. Another document, this one in Butterfield's handwriting, details Nixon's reaction to the My Lai massacre in which 504 Vietnamese civilians were slaughtered by American GIs. Here's just one quote of what you wrote down. Get backgrounds of all involved, all must be exposed, discredit witnesses. Yeah, see, discredit, that rings a bell. We went to great lengths to discredit people all the time. Butterfield wrote one memo about the possible left-wing affiliations of Ronald Ridenour, the soldier who first blew the whistle on me lie, and another about Seymour Hersh, the reporter who broke the story. According to the memo, Hersh received a $1,000 grant from the Edgar B. Stern Family Fund, which is clearly left-wing and anti-administration. Another vulnerable spot, according to Butterfield's notes, is the possible involvement of a lib Jew. So if the guy was a liberal Jew, that was material with which to exp 
to discredit somebody? Yeah, you're, you're asking me things that are very difficult to explain mm -hmm. about a very complicated man. A president who on a Christmas Eve tour of the old executive office building next to the White House made a discovery that sparked a witch hunt. Some of the staff people, bureaucrats, the civil servants, uh, had pictures of John F. Kennedy on their desks or on the wall. Nixon said we have to get rid of that infestation as if it was some sort of disease that somebody would have a picture of JFK in their office. What were you supposed to do about these pictures of other presidents on the walls? Get them all taken down. Get them all taken down? Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. He made that express order. In particular, White House Chief of Staff Bob Haldeman told Butterfield, the president would like you to find out who the woman is who has the two Kennedy pictures, adding he asks about it once a week at least. Butterfield reported back that the CIA, Secret Service, and FBI, even the House Committee on Un-American Activities, all found the woman, a civil servant named Edna Rosenberg, was a completely loyal American. What's surprising as you go through all of this is the amount of energy that was devoted to uh, these kind of maneuvers. This was a subversion of what the job of the presidency is. All of it documented in Butterfield's files. That's to Haldeman. This is to the Treasury Secretary. This is to the Social Secretary for the White House. They really are sort of a, a record of what the president is, is thinking about on, on any given day. Yeah. And some of them, at least 40 years after, seem very, very strange. Yes, they do. Did they, they, did they seem strange at the time? Uh, <laughs> in this strange environment, no. Nothing, of course, was stranger than the break-in at Democratic National Committee headquarters in the Watergate, that third-rate burglary which brought down the president. Butterfield was not in on it, but he knew about the taping system which could answer that famous question, what did the president know and when did he know it? Listen, the last thing I wanted to do is be the person that gave away the secret, because Haldeman and I had told the president we would never tell. But then a retired FBI agent named Donald Sanders, a member of the Watergate committee staff, wound up an otherwise routine interview by asking exactly the right question. You remember the question? Exactly. How did it go? Was there ever any other listening device in the Oval Office. That was, that was the, and, and I said, I think I said my exact, I'm sorry you asked that question. And history flips right there. I knew what I was saying, getting into. I really knew what it meant. When you look back at it now, would you have done anything differently in the way you handled that explosive secret of the taping system? No, I thought of that a lot. I bet. I regret absolutely nothing. I didn't do everything right, but I satisfied myself that I didn't tell a lie. It was, of course, the tapes that revealed the president had obstructed justice by ordering the cover-up of the Watergate break-in. Nixon was forced to resign, and Butterfield faded into retirement in California. This is that meeting that presidents have just before they go up to, to the Capitol to be sworn in as the new president. But now he's back to teach us all one of the basic lessons of journalism. There is always more to the story. There's the president waving goodbye. You hear the applause. 